Good afternoon. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Casey, the library director, and I thank you for joining us today for our next to the last lunch and learn for the season. And we are so pleased to have Kathleen Dickerson. Uh, we feel like she's an employee. She's at the library so much. <laughs> She's here, and many of you may know Kathleen. She's been a teacher in the school system, and lived here, and been involved in our community so much. And she and uh, one of our employees have brought a Virginia Hyatt have brought a beautiful collection of glass and ceramics that they're going to show you today and give you some information about. Uh, next month will be the last one for the season, and then we'll take a hiatus for the summer, June, July, and August. We have summer programming going on, and a lot of people travel, so we'll start back in September. Uh, and then, um, so keep an eye out. Those of you on the email list, uh, we'll send out a note like we do each time. Uh, if you are not on the email list and want to be, uh, let someone know and we'll get your email and we will add you to the list. Uh, just a couple of updates and a bit of information about the library because I've had some questions. Uh, the kiosk for remote hold pickups has been installed, but we still have some technical issues to work out. And uh, we're working with our vendors to get that all set up. So hopefully in two or three weeks that will be ready to go. It's just a matter of uh, we've got to have software where we we'll talk to one another uh, to do that. And it is at the Rogers Activity Center. I want to thank the friends of the library uh, for helping to fund that. And then uh, we've got a grant from Senator Bledsoe, a general improvement fund grant that's paying for that project. Also, if you noticed when you walked in the front doors, there are a lot of hearts on the glass. This is National Library Week, and people have been putting notes of what they love about their library, and we're posting them up. So we hope you'll take the time to do that. Uh, libraries change lives in our country. They provide so many resources, and we are so fortunate to live in a community uh, pair that supports its libraries and we have the type of library we have. Yes. I know I feel so blessed to be able to work here with the wonderful staff and the wonderful facility and all of the support from the community that we receive. So thank you because many of you play a role in that support and I really, really appreciate it. But you didn't come to hear me today. So I want to, let's give Kathleen a big applause. Thank you, Judy, and thank all of you for coming today. And Leslie and Robert and Virginia, thank you for thinking I could do this. I appreciate you. <laughs> and Virginia has brought some items to share. <coughs> I'm not a dealer, and I'm not an expert, and I taught school in my last year of teaching at Elmwood Junior High, first period heard this voice from the back row, and of course it was a boy. And he said, gee, she's old. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, young man, I am not old. I'm just older than you are. <laughs> and I'm delighted today to see some of you who also have a little bit of snow on the roof. Because when we picked this title with Leslie, Grandmother's Cover, I was thinking of my grandmother's cupboard. And had you all been in your 40s and 50s, well, we didn't have the right stuff in the cupboard. We should have had that. Pyrex, depression glass, jadeite, primitives, pressed glass, pie birds. But what we have today are things that work, some of them anyhow, in my grandmother's cupboard. My grandmother was born in 1861, which put her in her late 30s at the turn of the century. Now, Kansas farm women didn't have much in those days, but these are some of my memories that I'll share with you, and the same from Virginia. All of you have heard of carnival glass. Your carnival glass was given 
Back in the 30s, when life was pretty rough, uh, you bought something and you got a little coupon. You saved up your coupons and you could trade them in and get a piece of carnival glass. Or you bought oatmeal. And at the bottom of the oatmeal would be a little dish. I'm feeding the cat out of one. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but nevertheless, Carnival Glass was given as prizes for carnival games. It's always iridescent, and it's made in different colors and patterns. And some of the patterns were double, one on the inside, and another pattern on the outside. Marigold is the most common color and usually is the cheapest. I shouldn't use that word, less expensive. Okay. Uh, blue and purple are the most sought after. And again, especially if you're looking for a particular pattern, you may have problems. Fenton, Westmoreland, Imperial, and Northwood. Some are marked and some will never know. Uh, it's being reproduced from old molds, and so finding out for a reproduction is a challenge. Now this is a new piece, and the finish is different from the old, but we should come up later and look. It has much more of a shiny, shiny surface to it, and it doesn't have the, I don't know, a quality to soak up the light, maybe the age, but the beauty is much more in the old. And by the way, this is a hat pin holder. You've heard of those? They're also collectible. Tea strainers. You all know our history. They were in Boston Harbor. And if you had a tea caddy, a tea caddy was certainly something to uh, hang on to because tea was extremely expensive. So the water was boiled, the tea leaves were loose. Now do we salute you honey or just pretend that we have celebrities? <laughs> I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Victorian times, 1870 and 1910. Glass, silver, porcelain. They did invented the tea bag later, but for a long time people didn't like to use a tea bag. It didn't taste the same. It ruined the tea. They would much rather steep it and then pour it and dump the tea in the little compartment, pour it into your cup. And uh, you had a silver set, which most of us didn't, I didn't. But you had one bowl, it was your waste bowl, where you could dump the extra used tea leaves. And then you put the strainer in its grip holder. They were fashioned after wine and punch, which were used. And this is, I don't think this has ever gotten any cheaper. Mm. No. This, this comes from England, flow blue, around 1775, came from China, and the British wells of dew, lower masses couldn't afford these. But because of the blue, the cobalt oxide transfer, it didn't fire well, and it didn't hold, so it leaked all over the place. <laughs> and that's where the name Flow Blue came in. By 1820s, the British pottery were exporting this to America, and it became a great pit with the middle class. Wedgwood's boat and Stratford Shower today. The popularity was waning by 1910, but if you're collecting Flow Blue, save your money. Save your money. It's still quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a piece of lolly. It's quite knowledgeable to Virginia and me. 
Uh, it was named for Rene Lally, who perfected the Art Nouveau. An Art Deco and Art Nouveau confused me greatly. Art Nouveau was 1883-199. It's flowery, it's willowy, it's um, curvy. But, uh, where Art Deco is trim and plain, and you did the Charleston in the Art Deco period. It's mainly clear or opalescent, lead-based, as is my cup glass, either blown into a mold or pressed, and later they had also some, but the lines, the proportion, the elegance in that, and you can buy lolly today. The same thing with the little animals they make. You'll have that proportion. You'll have that grace. If you can believe that a little rabbit or a squirrel in a little figurine, just as in the nude, there's a grace there and a beauty. You could get perfume bottles, vases, ink wells, boxes, bookends, and I never could have one, but it would be neat. We also had that which went with it. The hood ornaments from the 20s. Uh, knife rests, uh, carving knives on the table. There's one here, two are here. And Victorian people. The Victorians, those who had the money, the lady of the house did not wash her dishes. She had Irish servants. They did all the work. And there is a piece of silver on a piece of china for about everything you want to serve on that table. But she didn't worry about the labor part of it. But uh -huh. knife rest protected the table. And the same thing, you had not just one knife, you might have three knives. And you'd have a band of forks out here, and you started from the outside and worked in. And then when you got done with those, honey, there were some across the top. And do you know that before a dessert fork was invented, you were perfectly proper in using your spoon to eat your dessert. And then this is really a true find you'd like to look at. Yeah, it's awesome. called Pigeon Blood glass and the red in it has some orange added to it and that gives you this particular color. You can find patterns in hobnail, bowls of blue, diamond quilt, fine rim, vertical rim. Finishes were shiny and satiny and the main maker was a consolidated lamp and glass company of Coropolis, Pennsylvania. The term pigeon blood came from the old term used to describe the highest quality of color in rubies. When my husband was in Thailand during the Vietnam War, I teased him. I said, I'd like for you to bring me back a ruby the size of my navel. Well, he didn't know the size of my navel. <laughs> I never got anything out. Now, I picked out of grandmother's cupboard the milk glass, the cup glass, and the Vaseline glass. And the three little green are added. They're my latest find that I fell in love with. And in this library are some great books on antiques. Albert Christian Reaver said that glass was discovered more than 5,000 years ago, and that it has been man's servant since the dawn of history. Milk glass <coughs> highlight, now they were earlier, but mid-1800s, 1870 to 1900. Uh, if I can find the one I have, and I'm not going to stand here. Now, this is it. If you hold the older pieces up to the light, you will see an opalescent edge, or that's the gold that they put in these, right? 
at the time. And this will help you say, okay, that one's older, maybe older than I am. Maybe not either. <laughs> but there are many of these. They've all been reproduced. They've even been reproduced in the Vaseline glass. But this is the first, usually, if you're going to collect milk glass, you start with the plates. There are so many out there to keep you busy. All animals are musician bears, owls, dogs, cats, which I have plenty. <laughs> this is a Patriot Art one. Oops, it's even gotten more opalescence. Now, I have another one at home that I didn't bring. That's because they painted them gold, or they thought they were painting it gold, and over the years it's turned. And it's ugly, greenish, black, and you cannot get it off. So I would rather have just the white one. And here you have the flag, the fleur de lis, and the eagles. <coughs> and then, of course, the holiday season, different maker, different way. A bunny, a bunny with clover. You can also get a bunny with horseshoes. You name it, there are many of them. Now, this is what got me into this. I didn't like milk glass. Everybody had something, I didn't like it. And my son who was supposed to have shown up to have carried my boxes. I guess he hadn't made it yet, probably didn't know it. <laughs> but he was born on Easter Sunday. And he was about eight years old, was when his grandmother died. And I was in a store in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, and here was this little rabbit on a dish. Well, what are you going to buy your kid that was born on Easter Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. So, I bought the rabbit. And you see the only thing you've been reproducing ever since. <laughs> And right now, at my house, when, you start, when I started collecting, people were good to me and they'd give me something. I have as near as I can figure out, I have a flock of chickens, probably several left over. And with chickens, and the one book, you all have a copy, and I bought a copy. And he talks about he and his wife went to an antique show, and the man had covered animal dishes for sale. He had 1,200 of them. And the man thought it would be great, so he bought them. So mm -hmm. I'd like to divorce him. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want chickens, this one has little eggs around it. It's one of the older ones. I can see the gold in it, and also it has a number. Now the joke is, its base should correspond to the number here. <laughs> We're lucky if it has a base with a number in it. Uh, and there's the man wrote, he said you can hold one in one hand and one in the other and still break them. I mean, it's possible. But this is a number five, chicken looking to the left and a number one base and this is called basket weave a basket weave base and when we finish if you're not bored to tears <laughs> if you'd like to come and look i'll try to answer questions now unfortunately i grew up on a farm in kansas my mother raised english laggards every year I hate you. <laughs> but you don't have good English leggings if you don't have an English legger rooster around somewhere. <laughs> so you get the rooster and the chicken. Now this is a split. This is a ribbed base. This would be an older base. And it has the number five. I might make those two. Okay. Surprise, surprise, surprise. They both have fives and should fit pretty well. 
But what you run into since the little ovals, about the turn of the 1900s, ladies had canaries. And they had to have a little bird bath. Well, those little oval dishes were just perfect. <laughs> so they put the tops up on the shelf and they stayed there, maybe till the heirs found them later and thought, oh, we're doing with these things up here. <laughs> so you don't always get a pair that will fit. And you can tell it. They, they slip and they slide and you sweep up the pieces. Uh -oh. When you have this, that's called a marriage. Well, for those of you who have gone through this, there have been times when <clears throat> you don't always agree. <laughs> so, this is one of my favorites. I would call this more of a picket base. When I think of a little picket fence, and again, it must be a little older, it's pink. But this is my mule-eared rabbit. And having had a kid born on Easter Sunday, I have quite a few rabbits. This is a newer piece. One of the best cup uh, milk glass makers was the Atterbury, probably one of the first. They made the lacy edge base. And the round lacy edge in a top to fit it. So now they also made a rectangular lacy edge, and then they had one a different one. This is a little bit older because it does not have the glass eyes glued on. And you'll see a little indentation here. Now if you want to glue your own in, you could. But the little fox is well cut and patented August the 6th, 1889. This one was reproduced by West Harlan Company, which is now out of business. It went bankrupt. But West Moreland and all the companies is to be complimented. They bought up old molds as many of these glass factories went out of business because you needed fuel, gas, later electricity. <coughs> you needed sand, and they used up some of that back east. So they would close those, and many moved to the Midwest, Ohio, Indiana, and that area. But Westmoreland always made a classy piece. And if they did a reproduction, they marked it. You'll find a little WG in there somewhere. But many of the others just bought up the molds and used them. And it's difficult to say, well, this is an old piece. This is a reproduction. So that's a part of it. And then these are pin trays back in those days, hair pins, safety pins, straight pins, and they usually had other little containers to go with them. Again, you get the light on it right, and you've got a lovely pinkish gold edge. And this is a piece of light blue milk glass, very plain on the front, but would you look at the back? Just a little pin tray. And I'll get off of milk glass with whatever I didn't tell you. Well, maybe you'll find out some I only have one of these, but I have several blue pieces. So last year, I got them all out, and Blue Duck had a party. <laughs> and when I was done with them, except for Blue Duck, they're all packed up in a box. <laughs> we may have to have another party. But you can have blue, light blue, dark blue, black, many colors. Now, I don't know what my notes say. I don't miss too much. Anything you want in milk glass, you can get people. You can get the covered dishes. 
sugar bowls, bottles, vases, lamps, candlesticks, trays, platters, pictures. <clears throat> I was amazed at the pictures of pictures. Now, I taught school, and I've had sweet kids that had a little trouble with those two words. I don't know whether they knew the difference between a picture and a picture or not. <laughs> but we made it. We got there all right. And syrup jars. Now, they're a little bit rare, but they're great. And bowls and compotes. And I get carried away with lids. But they do break, so you have to be careful there. Okay. I'll tell you the history here. I didn't bring many. I grew up, I'm a child of the Depression. No, I'm not one of the greatest generation. We're called the lucky generation, mainly because we survived the Depression and the 30s and lived on a farm. And back in those days, the Biden would cut the wheat, you shocked it, you put it on the hay rack, you drove it in. You dumped it in the thrasher, and it blew chaff if you left the windows <laughs> open. You didn't sleep well in your bed that night. You itched too badly. <laughs> and they got the water from the steam engine from the creek, and so the water wagon, you drove the horses down, loaded it up. And the wives cooked the dinner for the thrashers. That was every plate, every bowl, every chair spread out. Mother did not like tea. She made her tea in a great big five-gallon crock. Honey, that stuff could have walked its way to the creek. <laughs> I still don't care for tea too much for this day. But she had one piece of cut glass, a bowl. Now, she and Daddy were married on May 4, 1915, which will be 100 years ago next month. And she made slaw and put the slaw in that cut glass bowl for those thrashing crew to pass <laughs> down the table and they go, oh! <laughs> I still have her bowl today. Oh, wow. Just as oh, that's nice. I have. She had a little lamp about yay high with a milk glass base, which is more than 100 years old. These are the things that I kept. Uh -huh. They're in my cupboard. So, let me share with you, if you want to collect this, there's some out there. Uh, it began in America in 1810, a company called Bakewell and Page. Its heyday was 1880 through 1915. The colors, and this, you make one miscut, you start over. Can you imagine the pile of glassware they had at the end of the day? Of course, it was melted down. But the three types of wheels were a flat edge, miter, and convex. And the brilliant period, as you can see, 1880-1905. Deep miter cut, costly glass then. It ain't cheap, if you'll excuse the poor English. I'm a business major, and they let me teach English for 23 years. And I oh, said, I've atoned for a few of my sins. I was in junior high. <laughs> but, you don't buy an inexpensive piece of cut glass today. Well, can you stop and think how old most of this is? It was made in full sets for the table. Now that's goblets, wine glasses, water tumblers, dishes like olives, little uh, pickles, what have you, celery. Uh, I don't have one of these, Kevin for it. <coughs> knife rest. You use this to serve any food that was not heated. You wanted to ruin it, lose it, cry over it, <laughs> put something hot in it, or put it in hot dishwater. Because that's what would happen. It will crack. Now, being a military wife for 19 years, we moved a few times. And I also learned the hard way and I didn't bring a picture for that reason. Never just pick up a cup glass or even a press glass picture by the handle. 
What you're going to have is a lovely crack right here and it will come on up. Now, there are more names of the different, they all have patterns. And what those cutters did, because they were artists in their own right, they would go look at what somebody else had done. Now they're all patented, you know, we've named it. That's our pattern. Well, he'd go back home, he'd cut a piece and put in an extra little slice or two, and he'd have his own. So they stole from each other the whole time that we were doing. But if you take a good look at this, you have large fans, you have whatever those little things are called. I call these hob stars. But, and I didn't get the other piece, I just bought this as is, and the auctioneer thought I was nuts, but he wanted the first one. This is the strawberry pattern. If you look closely, here's the berry, and here's the stem. And that one you can at least see. Now, Hobstar, Fan, oh, let's see, what else am I missing? Hobstar, Pinwheel, Hobnail, Star, Fan, Diamond, Cane, or Chair Bottom. Think of a cane chair. Technically, its name is Harvard. <laughs> Cross hatching, waffle grid, pattern names, and patented. Again, the companies came to the Midwest. The availability of gas for gas heat, new sands, and electric power. In 1902, there were 80 cutting shops making cut glass in the United States. Now, by 1929, changes in taste, the depression, this luxurious, expensive stuff became costly, and the style of living changed, and now we try to find as much as we can and call it collectible. It might be marked. I have two pieces which are marked, and there was an awful lot. <clears throat> You have to play with it to get the light right. And there's a green circle in this. That's because I can't see the mark, but it's Libby. Libby Glass Company has been in business for years. Uh, again, we have a fan. We have a star. We have a star in the bottom. And that's one of the tests right there of do you know if it's true cut glass. I bumped my ring on it. Yeah. Do you hear it? Yeah. Okay. It should talk to you. You tap it. It should ring in a clear tone. If it's cracked, you'll get a cracked tone. Mm -hmm. Feel the edges. They'll be rough. And again, they should be sharp. This one especially is, is sharp. So, if you want to know if you're that piece you'd like to have, will it talk to you? Does it feel sharp? Is it heavy? And does it spark? And that's about what you need to know. I brought this one. It's, it's well, I don't know why it's so heavy, but can you see the pinwheel? Think of fireworks. Mm -hmm. You can have hob stars and you can have pinwheels. And in the center you have a small hob star and you have some fans and you have some etching. Mm -hmm. These are celery dishes for cut glass. Now, this is pressed glass, this is Vaseline, but if this were not in color, this is, help me out, panel thistle, panel thistle, panel thistle pattern in pressed glass. No sharp edges, dull edges, no ringy dating, but you have again many of the same cuttings. However, these were handled differently. 
one false move here, and the cutter would start over. And if you drop it, you start over. <laughs> okay, this is my dumbbell, my knife rest. Right. This one is barked fry. Pickles, nuts, you name it. Again, hob stars. Three big hob stars, a small one in the center, and whatever it took to create their design. And to me, this is probably the brightest of all. It's got the sharpest edges. They're little nappies. And you get the light just right. You can see the deep incising here. And again, a pinwheel with a little hob star center and so many others. And my son and I went to Shiloh Museum in <coughs> Venetia, and we were just to take no more than 20 items of something. So I hauled down my flock, my cry, my litter. I, but I have one, one cubby, a cubby or quail, and I have one quail. So I took him along. <coughs> And somebody said to Mark, no, was he going to keep all that? No, he didn't like the milk glass, but he wanted the, the cup glass. <laughs> so at least he's there. And I got into this. This has turned out to be a favorite. Uh, again, we're back in the cupboard. Uh, 1860s, 1890s. Vaseline glass, also called canary, topaz, yellow, chameleon, and a few other non-printable words. <laughs> it was a greenish yellow colored glass produced during the Victorian era when Queen Victoria was on the throne. It was used for pressed tablewares, vases, whimsies. What's a whimsy is whatever you want to call it. It's a whimsy. This is Vaseline glass. Then they reheated it, stuck it back in, and put the opalescent on. Oh. And that's, and they call it a little vase. <coughs> now, I didn't bring the one I thought I did that was misnomer. Because they also made little spittoons for ladies that they could carry in their purses. <laughs> and he landed his spittoon, and I thought, hey, I wouldn't want this one in my purse. <laughs> Maybe they used it inside. Well, I was looking at your one and only Vaseline book from the library, which is about to fall apart, bless its heart. And in the back was an ad. And that one and this one were both shown in the ads. Rose bowls. And I thought, that's no spittoon. It was a rose bowl. Mm -hmm. They charged me enough for a spittoon when I crossed that out. <laughs> <clears throat> and you can find most everything. A little cruet, I have a larger one. By the way, if you happen to find a cruet in cut glass, most of the time the stoppers will never match. I had one at home, and I'm sorry, I didn't break a few of it. I'm dead too heavy. You pull the stopper out, and on the inside it reads hawks, which, and there are the hawks. <laughs> another company that made. Uh, they could mark those anywhere. Maybe here, maybe on the bottom, maybe on the stopper. Most 90% <coughs> not at all. Okay. Now, I'm into pressed glass here that has been made, taken the molds and used the Vaseline glass. This would be a toothpick with the opalescent. And anybody know the pattern? Is that eye winker? It's eye winker. That's right. This is eye winker. One with opalescent edge, one without. Oh, you know what they are? Salt and pepper. Table salts. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is a late one. This is a much later, has a western, it was made in the 50s. 
quite collectible. You've all seen the corn uh, and the celery. Now, the thing that, well, I'm a covered animal, folks. Anybody who collects them, she ought to have about 60 other suckers. <laughs> but this company is Boyd, and they must have gotten a hold of West Marlin went out of business in 1889, 1989, I think it was, something like that. And I think Boyd got as many of the molds as they could. Now, this is a split rib base. That looks as if you've split it. And I have a frog next to somebody. And I have a turtle. And this looks beautiful on a table in the early 1880s and 90s. It was just gorgeous. And you had candlelight, and it would flicker yellow, and it would flicker green. And maybe you had a kerosene lamp if you were rich. And it would flicker and smoke up the chimney. And you could trim the wick. You didn't burn yourself. This sort of thing, done it all. But that flicker of candlelight or that kerosene light or even a gaslight just seemed to make that magical. But something happened in the late 1890s and Vaseline glass as being the pride of the family and the tableware became a victim of, what do you think killed it? Yes, you're so right. Right there. The electric light killed it. It didn't allow it to have that flicker, that green. But if you would like to know if it's true Vaseline glass and Robert, give me a minute and then will you cut the lights for me just a moment? Okay. I have a black light. And why am I getting the green glow? Okay, Robert, thank you. <clears throat> because when this was made originally, people, they put uranium in the mix. Now, not enough to hurt you. And once it was heated and cooked, it didn't come through. And it was only like about 1%. But that's how you know you have an honest piece of Vaseline glass. Because with a black light, and I just love the frog. <laughs> I think I have more fun with that than anything. And I'm doing pretty well with my time, because I was giving you some questions. So I don't know what the cards say. Probably not at all what I said, but that's all right. <laughs> I've just recently discovered Zolni. What? Spell it. Z, this is the joke. I also learned to spell. <laughs> Z-S-O-L-N-A-Y. Uh -huh. Zolni. My son and I went to an antique show in Springdale about three years ago. No, couldn't afford a thing that was there. <laughs> Walked past the man's booth and Mark says, where are you going? I said, He's got a piece of Zolni. Except I pronounced it Zolni. Oops. But would have ruined my dignity. Anyhow, I think he passed away last winter. But he bought this in Hungary. That's where it's made. He carried it in his backpack and his jacket oh all the way across to Poland. Now, this is what we have. In the beginning, the company produced cement mm. and industrial and kitchenware, 1850s. Early 1870s, it started on this decorative art pottery. That's when it was begun, and that continues to this day. The city of, I don't speak Hungarian, P-E-C-S, pronounced P-A-A-C-H, you're on your own. <laughs> a city of southwest Hungary close to the Yugoslav border. Its old German name was, okay, somebody. How do you say five in German? 
Okay, now add Kirchen to that, and you've got the name of the city, meaning there are five churches in Pot. <laughs> and since the 1920s, they have been producing these green figures of animals and children, and uh, nearly all Zolni is marked. Either it'll say Zolni, and then the name PECS, or on the bottom will be the five steeples of the churches. And that's how you'll know. Now, you have an iridescent with the dog in the base, and then you have a different shading. I guess that's their E O C I N E uh, green, or else the luster is. And it is just now finding its way to Arkansas. Although, Virginia says, since I don't con do computers. I've never seen it before. Uh, I hadn't been there till I bought, I think, the little goat. I was born in December, so, you know, you're a Capricorn, you're a goat, so I had to have the mother goat, your kid. That was the first piece I bought. I have a pair of polar bears in the same muted green, a buffalo in the iridescent, and we have some little girls. We have another dog. And the last one I found before the antique stores shop show closed down in Eureka Springs, the lady had one. I said, Oh, you have a soul? And she says, I don't know, what's that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> <laughs> and in France, as you know, they stuff the geese to create water. Yes. And I have the girl stuffing her goose. Poor oh, goose. I've enjoyed it. I don't know whether you've learned anything or not. If you have any questions, I'll do the best I can. Yes? What kind of, was that a black light you were using? <coughs> That's a black light. Okay. Uh, Does it work with the zombie as no. well? No. Just no, ura no uranium in anything else. Oh, okay. Just in the Vaseline glass. Although I do have another piece at home that glows a pink, whatever was in it, but it responded to the ultraviolet light here. So, yes, ma'am. Sue, welcome. Thank you. Uh, your correct title is? Sue Scott, State Representative, District I'm, 95. I'm delighted to have Sue here today. We go way back. <laughs> I had her kids in class. <laughs> <laughs> she was their favorite. To this day, they will tell you what a wonderful teacher she was. I have a simple question for you. I know your collection. I know how much stuff you have and how pretty it is and everything. If you could add two pieces, uh -oh. only two pieces, and money was of no object, which two pieces would you go out today and buy? On the spot. Not really. <laughs> Call me greedy. Oh, you <laughs> I would try to find a piece, maybe not Tiffany, but a piece from either Art Deco or Nouveau of a pin of jewels, true, honest jewels to wear. Yeah, eighty-seven thousand dollars, like my friend has his value. <laughs> We're playing pretend. It's yeah. great. Good, good choice. choice. Yeah. Good choice. What else? What's your second choice? A larger house in which to put all the. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm going to have run out of room, and it's time to start. And you, know, most of you know this. I was buying two things. I had two granddaughters, one for each. Well, my older granddaughter died in childbirth last July. Now I've got all this extra, and the other granddaughter, I love her dearly, but hi, she's got space, she said, come. <laughs> you know, I'm not too sure what we're going to do with the covered animal dishes. <laughs> we may have an auction. Yeah. 
Or we may have a grand and glorious garage sale. Take your pick. <laughs> so anyhow, but some of it will pass on. The Zolni, uh, most people enjoy this. If nothing else, the black lot makes it fun. Yeah, it is fun. We went to the show in Springdale, and it was just to bring what you collected. And somebody dashed down, we have your black light? The lady at the other end. So, sure. So I went down there later, and she had brought three ducks. A big duck, a middle duck, and a little duck. And by the time we all got done with her black lights, she had three Vaseline glass ducks. She didn't know what she had. Oh, my. So, they're fun to carry. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. Boy. Boy. Big word. Boy. McCoy. 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 I don't collect. It's very collectible. Very desirable. I might have one piece. But somehow I don't have a collection. It seems like it's gone down. All right. Carnival glass is a good example of that also. Carnival glass can be high. And then it'll go out of favor and drop down and cross. And much of the pottery is the same way. Flow blue, something like the lily, the rarity of the pigeon blood will hold. And that stuff right there that, well, I love it. It doesn't keep its value. Although, yes. Are you familiar yes. with glass works? It is. Um, it was. A, it was the town where my mother grew up, and it was established in the 1700s. It's been a large glass factory there, and I have been looking for anything that was made in that glass factory or pottery. Do you have the name of the glass factory? If we can find that. They got some books here okay. that list the different glass companies okay. and sometimes the patents they have. That would be the way I would go with that. You would need to know your glass colors, your company. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Closer look now. Okay. Just don't you bag them together, no. please. I, I know, at least in the back, you probably couldn't see some of this stuff, and it's really beautiful. You, you need to come up with it. Yes. Yes, pound, thistle. That's almost too much for me. <laughs>